a tier 1 college gives you better access to the information to all of these ecosystems mm -hmm. a tier 2 or 3 college doesn't give you access to any of this information because no one is telling you those things i want to do well in cat mm -hmm. but i have only one problem i don't have time you have 20 to 25 hours a week she called me last week trilly was on the verge of crying she was like yogesh i am in this b school for the last couple of months i don't have friends here thing could be the highlight of this entire discussion today so i have three words that are banned on linkedin and i'm going to write this to linkedin that please ban ban these three words hi shouldn't i have someone very amazing for today's podcast he is someone who is not just an entrepreneur and a mentor but who's also been very closely tracking the cat space someone who's been a trainer for cat himself but not just that, he has his own businesses, his own uh, training sessions and whatnot. We'll cover all of that. But uh, help me welcome Yogesh. Yogesh, thank you so much for agreeing to do this with me on such short notice. We were just talking about it yesterday at the creators event and you agreed to come here. Uh, we'll get to all the things that we've covered right now. And uh, let's see what our students, what our audience can take from this. But okay, let's begin with a short introduction as uh, like your educational background and how you've reached where you are right now. All these hundred kinds of different things that you do, how did all come into picture? Amazing. Thank you, Ria, so much for having me. Uh, it was a short conversation yesterday we had the, at the creators meet mm -hmm. and right away we hit it off and let's do this mm -hmm. podcast. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I am Yogesh Choradia. I am a Marwari Jain from Rajasthan, but born, brought up, lived in Chennai for three generations. My family has been there in Chennai. Mm -hmm. So uh, who I am, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I run a couple of my family businesses and some ventures that I've started on my own. We also, uh, you know, maintain a family investment fund. That is something that I do. After my MBA, I picked up keen interest in training, mentoring and coaching. And that is where I realized that I want to make a huge impact outside my businesses. Mm -hmm. In this journey of training, mentoring people, uh, in the last 15 odd years, I have trained over 40,000 people, unique people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. across training them for aptitude tests like CAT, GMAT, GRE, ZAT, all mm -hmm. the tests that we have in India, mm -hmm. and teaching people communication skills, teaching people leadership, team mm -hmm. building, mm -hmm. also helping colleges, B schools with their placement training mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. I've also been a corporate trainer, I've run a corporate training company. I've been a partner at a management consulting firm, a boutique firm in mm -hmm. Chennai. Mm -hmm. And I continue mentoring people for the last 15 years mm -hmm. across B-School aspirants, mm -hmm. future education aspirants, because B-School is only one niche in that. Mm -hmm. I also mentor undergraduates. Mm -hmm. I mentor B-Schoolers. Mm -hmm. I mentor a whole lot of corporate professionals on how to upskill, how to keep themselves relevant, how mm -hmm. to grow, how to pivot. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things I do purely out of my passion for helping people mm -hmm. because I come from a background where when I was growing up mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. my college or during even during my undergraduation, mm -hmm. I had no support ecosystem. The first time that I heard of the word CAT, mm -hmm. the admission test for an MBA in India mm -hmm. was after I completed my undergraduation mm -hmm. and that too at a coaching center. Mm. That was the level of awareness that mm -hmm. was available to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the reasons after my MBA, I took it up as a mission that whatever I will do in my life, whether I do business or whatever I do, I will make sure that I spend a significant amount of my time every week, every month on training people, on mentoring people. Mm -hmm. And that is what brings me here today. Wow. And, and you've set up so many portals where you share so much relevant resources. That's how we got connected. We'll, we'll get to that also. So uh, you, you've you given me so many nuggets to pick up on. Let's start with your undergrad. So uh, I know that you've finished your uh, bachelor's in commerce and you finished your bachelor's in commerce and realized that, okay, I want to do an MBA, but I don't know how. So take us through that journey. You've just come up with this new, heard of this new word CAT. And how do you figure out from there? Okay, I need to do an MBA for that. Then gate is CAT. I don't know anything about it. Now, how do you approach that? Right. So when I, would, I was in this juncture, I was at one of the coaching centers mm -hmm. where the counselor told me that Yogesh, if you want to give CAT, there are three sections in CAT essentially, mm -hmm. quant, verbal and DILR. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to be good at all three of them because mm -hmm. A, there is an overall percentile mm -hmm. and B, there are sectional cutoffs that various B schools follow. Mm -hmm. And for me, all of these three things looked like Greek and French at that point. But then uh, with the right support 
right material and a right prep plan mm-hmm. one can easily navigate this journey of preparing for cat mm-hmm. and for me because i was very new to this at that point i hadn't studied math for 6 years before i appeared for cat mm-hmm. uh, it was even big, a bigger challenge and in my journey in the last 15 years i have come across hundreds of people mm-hmm. who tell me that i have not studied math for the last 3 years 5 years mm-hmm. and so on and so forth and therefore uh, my mission when i started teaching people for cat was to build this confidence in people who don't have a background whether in verbal mm-hmm. because they might have studied in their vernacular languages or people who have not studied math after class 10 or after college so the primary reason i started teaching was to build confidence in those people that if someone like me could do well in cat without the background in that mm-hmm. you can as well mm-hmm. all you need is three things a mm-hmm. the right material mm-hmm. b the right plan mm-hmm. and c which is the most important is the intent what i see lacking in the best of the best people in the country who i coach is they have the best material today internet and portals are flooded with material mm-hmm. youtube is flooded with material mm-hmm. right b there are a lot of plan planners and schedulers that are available section wise chapter wise mm-hmm. and all of that mm-hmm. and one could figure out on their own pace mm-hmm. but what i see really lacking is the intent mm-hmm. because when you have intent you will be committed you will give hours every day to it mm-hmm. so in my journey uh, in the morning i used to go for my cat coaching class from 7 to 9 i would come back home uh, because i had completed my college already mm-hmm. so i had my entire day with me i had no other commitments apart from my family business that i was a part of mm-hmm. so i would come back at 9 from the coaching i would spend a couple of hours at my family business until mm-hmm. afternoon mm-hmm. again at 1 130 i would go to the center Mm-hmm. and i would spend the next 3 to 4 hours at the center in their library mm-hmm. preparing for cat just self study just self study uh-huh uh-huh and the reason why i would go to the center is because at home there was a lot of distraction i come from a joint family mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you need to do take care of some chores you need to mm-hmm. you know there will be there's always someone ye kar do wo kar do yes always uh-huh. a lot of distraction uh-huh. Uh-huh. so i chose to go to the uh, coaching center library mm-hmm. and for two reasons a to be distraction free mm-hmm. and b there were a lot of other people coming to the coaching center Mm. to use the library mm-hmm. so now one thing that i figured was i was good at a couple of things in my cat journey mm-hmm. in my prep journey mm-hmm. and there were other people who were coming who were better at things that i was really bad at mm-hmm. i was really weak at mm-hmm. so i would walk up to them for concepts that i was weak at and they would very selflessly help me with whatever doubts i had wow and similarly i would offer them if mm-hmm. they wanted mm-hmm. some support from my side on things that i was good at lrdi <laughs> lrdi uh-huh. and a little bit of verbal i uh-huh. would help them with that mm-hmm. and as a result we build this camaraderie in mm-hmm. the library mm-hmm. that every day we all will be here at the same time we will do our own study mm-hmm. there will be intervals where we will reach out to each other to support mm-hmm. each other for help needed right? yeah for help mm-hmm. and that's how all of us grew wow and mm-hmm. each one of us who were at that library for those 6 months mm-hmm. went to different b schools in the country mm-hmm. and we are all doing exceedingly well in our own lives in our own ways wow so the right resources mm-hmm. the right prep plan and the right, and the right intent, intent. Okay, so let's uh, bring out the mentor in you. Let's say there's a student who's either in their final years of their uh, undergrad, or someone like you who have finished their um, undergrad and are wanting to do prepare for CAT, or it could even be someone who's working on the side and prepare for CAT. So, what uh, advice, tips, tricks you have? It could either be section wise because you've been a trainer yourself, you've been a faculty at a cat uh, coaching institute so uh, other than general advice about uh, of course intent resources and plan if there's anything specific you would want to point out for all these three sections for the three kinds of people bachelor uh, students in their undergrad students either in their gap year and students working on the side if there's anything that you think people don't know or you want to point out it absolutely so one thing that i figured out by while i was training people for cat mm-hmm. full full on mm-hmm. people stuck to the syllabus that was being run in the coaching institute mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even now people who are taking online classes or are going to offline classes mm-hmm. really wait for a certain topic to happen at the coaching class then only and only then they pick it up uh-huh. Uh-huh. that is one of the biggest pitfalls in your cat preparation journey mm-hmm. what you need to do is let the coaching institute run as per their plan mm-hmm. because they have to do x number of classes in y number of days and they will follow their schedule irrespective mm-hmm. of how good or bad you are at a certain topic Absolutely. your prep plan should ensure that it doesn't have any kind of you know connection with the coaching centers prep plan okay right mm-hmm. so you note down all the syllabus 
identify from the syllabus which topics you believe you are good at mm -hmm. which topics you believe are your weakness and therefore like brian tracy says mm -hmm. eat the frog first the toughest one the first. toughest ones first uh -huh. because what you need is mm -hmm. to get the problem sorted first mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. also that will help you gauge how deep you are into the water Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. uh, what I've seen a lot of people do is they finish the easier topics first mm -hmm. and then keep the tough, toughest topics for the last. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let us agree on a fact that in CAT mm -hmm. and in many other competitive exams today, mm -hmm. the difference between a 99 percentiler, a 99.99 percentiler and a 99.9 percentiler mm -hmm. is one correct or wrong answer. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you skip on a chapter that you believe is your weakness thinking ki i will only lose one question mm -hmm. that one question could be, be the difference between you being at the best college in the country at, or, or an average no, yeah. or no or at all making it yes, that year. yes yes so therefore uh, what i used to do mm -hmm. okay i will take back one step mm -hmm. and i will say mm -hmm. though i said eat that frog first mm -hmm. to keep the motivation levels high mm -hmm. whenever i help people with their prep plan what i do is i help them schedule their entire week mm -hmm where we divide the week in such a way that three or four days of the week they will do things that they are weak at okay and three or four days of the week they will do things that they are really good at mm -hmm. so that helps people maintain a fine mental balance confidence as well as challenge. yes for example in my case i was very bad at algebra mm -hmm. i was very bad at uh, geometry mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. on the other hand i was very good at numbers i was very good at time speed distance i was very good at permutation combination and stuff like that mm -hmm. so in the seven days of my prep plan, I was all I would obviously prepare on quant every single day. Mm -hmm. But on day one, let's say I did geometry. Mm -hmm. On day two, I will deliberately pick up numbers, number systems, so that I have something to look up to. Plus, I don't, you know, really dread the idea that oh my god, I have to prepare again today. Mm -hmm. Something that I absolutely the same, uh, the circle despise. and the rhombus and all uh -huh, of that, uh -huh. right? So I didn't want those seven days to feel like something I will despise. So there'll be one day where I'll have something that I look up to because I enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. On another day, I will take it as a challenge that I don't like this topic. I don't understand this topic, but I am going to slug it out today for that hour or two, whatever I'm going to spend. Mm -hmm. Similarly, in the prep plan, mm -hmm. I also suggest people, which I also followed, is to alter between doing sections. Mm -hmm. So let's mm -hmm. say you're, you have two schedules in a day to prepare. Mm -hmm. So in the morning, if I would do quant, mm -hmm. in the evening, I would do either verbal or DILR. Mm -hmm. And like that, I would keep altering. Because one thing that I've learned as a trainer, as a coach, is that our brain is the most creative organ in the world. Mm -hmm. Creative, I would not only say organ, creative creature in the world. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like monotony. You mm -hmm. take the favorite dish in your life mm -hmm. and I ask you to eat it for seven days a week, you will, st you will start hitting that item on the seventh day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when we can't eat a dish that is our favorite for seven days a week, how will your brain accept you consuming the same material, the material every single day slot. or slot after sort. Mm -hmm. So therefore, altering between topics morning and evening, mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. days, mm -hmm. would mm -hmm. really keep you motivated, mm -hmm. would really keep your progress on track. What I've seen a lot of people doing is if they pick up quant for three months consistently, they do quant. And they think verbal, I'm good at, I will take care of it later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will finish it. No, if you're good at verbal, mm -hmm. you should ensure that you are at the 99.99th percentile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You cannot be okay with being at the 99th percentile, mm -hmm. but you will only move from the 99th percentile to the 99.99th uh -huh. percentile if you have that extra edge where you are practicing it every day in the run up to the uh -huh, uh -huh. D-Day. Sharpening up your strengths. Sharpening up your strengths. Mm -hmm. So for sections that you are good at mm -hmm. and for sections that you are weak at, mm -hmm. you need to have a fine balance between things that you are good at mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. that you are not good at. Mm -hmm. So that on the fortunate given day mm -hmm. what happens if the things that you are good at give you the toughest questions yes so that ends up becoming a weakness for that day because maybe though you are good at that topic mm -hmm. but unfortunately mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. question is a trick question yes and you don't know how to sort that question in a stretch situation and because you were banking on that section now your entire morale yes. for that paper so goes so now down. your weakness also gives you a hit mm -hmm. your strength also gives you a hit mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. therefore like in life you need to strike a fine balance between your strengths mm -hmm. and your weaknesses mm -hmm. you need to strike a fine balance between the topics that you juggle between mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that because you're preparing for cat you have to give up on your life on everything else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you have your days well planned mm -hmm. and this is one thing that i learned 
from my days mm -hmm. it doesn't mean people preparing for their ca people preparing for uh, competitive exams like cat they think that this is the end of our lives we don't have no fun mm -hmm. uh, no joy in our life mm -hmm. but that's not the case you are allowed to go out meet your friends watch movies binge watch do whatever you want mm -hmm. but every madness needs to have a method mm -hmm. if you know what you're doing for how long you're going to do it mm -hmm. and when do you have to get back to what your primary goals are mm -hmm. you're sorted you don't need to worry about it mm -hmm. just strike a fine balance yeah that that is how people with 9 or 10 or 12 hours of work days are able to prepare for cat because okay they have their slot sorted uh, i'll work for so and so hours either one or two hours after work or before work and on the weekends i grind for cat so anything on uh, advice for working professionals absolutely these are the people i really love helping because mm -hmm. when when we get started mm -hmm. the only thing that they tell me is yogesh i want to do well in cat mm -hmm. but i have only one problem what is the problem i don't have time <laughs> and do you know what my answer is mm -hmm. the belief that you don't have time is a perception that you have built in your head and i tell them i can guarantee you you have 20 to 25 hours a week mm -hmm. to prepare please help us break that down yes i will tell you it's just that you haven't figured out how to capture the time from your day mm -hmm. okay uh, most working professionals have an off on their weekends yes i'm assuming that you are yeah. not working on saturdays and sundays mm -hmm. and therefore i'm not even asking you to give your entire saturday sunday to your cat mm -hmm. prep journey mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm only asking for 4 to 6 hours on a weekend Mm -hmm. four to six mm -hmm. so if i take six 12 hours during the weekend mm -hmm. right if i'm taking four eight, eight to hours. ten hours let's mm -hmm. say let's settle on 10 hours during the weekend mm -hmm. so in the 20 25 hours that i told you mm -hmm. i have given you the 10 hour already yep. now come let me come to the 15 hours mm -hmm. so 15 hours in other words is nothing but two hours in a day mm -hmm. correct if you're so passionate about cracking cat and going to one of the best b school in the country i'm sure you will be able to take out two hours from your day we all have 24 hours a day Mm -hmm. I'm giving you 10 hours in your day for your sleep, mm -hmm. for your chores, for your travel. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving you another 8, 9 hours in your day for your work. Mm -hmm. So now we are still left with 4, four, four good hours, mm -hmm. right? 4 plus hours in fact. Yes. Even in that 4 hours, I'm giving you 2 hours for your other things in life, your you know family time, this, that. Mm -hmm. So either pick up two hours every evening after you're back from office mm -hmm. or if you believe that two hours is too much after a strenuous day at work, you need to start building a habit of spending one hour before going to office in the morning mm -hmm. for your cat prep mm -hmm. and one hour in the evening. Now, for some people, I go on to the extent of saying, can you solve 10 questions during your lunch break at your office? Or read a passage or on read the a passage. commute on the commute uh -huh, and uh -huh. small small things like yeah. that but that's going to the another level i am mm -hmm. saying dedicated 45 minutes one hour in the morning can you compromise on your sleep wake mm -hmm. up one hour early mm -hmm. for the next mm -hmm. six months mm -hmm. right similarly can you spend that one hour post dinner don't binge watch your instagram or don't your netflix do school. yes yeah. instead tell yourself that this one hour i'm going to complete this one chapter or I'm going to read this one passage mm -hmm. or whatever it is that mm -hmm. you are as per your plan. So 14 hours typically during, okay, now let us come back to the math. Five days, two hours each is 10 hours mm -hmm. and six hours on the weekends, six plus six, 12 is 12 20, plus 10, 22. 22 solid hours you have. Mm -hmm. All I need from you mm -hmm. is the consciousness about the fact that I have that time. Mm -hmm. I need to give that time mm -hmm. and the dedication that I will give it no matter what. Now imagine I'm telling you, I'm only asking you for six hours in an entire weekend day on a Saturday, six mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. So maybe a couple of hours in the morning, couple of hours in the evening, six hours is taken care of. Absolutely. You know, unknowingly, this is exactly what I was doing when I was working at Tata Steel while preparing for CAT. But the only difference was that I had absolutely no energy after coming back. So my two hours were entirely in the morning Absolutely. five to seven or maybe six to eight before i went to work but exactly this and six to seven hours on the weekends and even after that i had time in the night on saturdays so because i'm a human i need to uh, absolutely relax i need to meet friends so yeah this this is very I much in fact, what i encourage do. people that don't give up on other parts of your life mm -hmm. please 
while you are preparing for cat mm-hmm. while you are preparing for any career even mm-hmm. when you are at b school mm-hmm. i tell all my b school mentees also because mm-hmm. at b schools you know you spend 20 22 hours a day working mm-hmm. even those people i tell don't give up on your hobbies and passions for any cost you may get the best job you may you know win a case com or anything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it should not come at the cost of your hobbies and passions mm-hmm. why mm-hmm. your hobbies and passions are the only calming effects of your life yes right they bring your sense of purpose a b they help you grow as a person as a human absolutely right so mm-hmm. you look at any successful person in the world multi millionaires sports stars film stars anyone mm-hmm. uh, whatever hobbies and passions they have they have a schedule for it if they are golfers they would make sure that on the weekend they are there on the golf course mm-hmm. if they are hitchhikers they would be at the mountain that they want mm-hmm. to climb mm-hmm. if they are into any other sport any other you know art mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. painting or this or that they would be doing their own thing if they like to write or you know record or they are in the studio doing it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that is their reason for the longitude of their success mm-hmm. see we don't look at ordinary people as successful someone has composed a good song and that song became a success we don't remember their name who do we remember we remember sachin tendulkar longevity of success we remember amitabh bachchan longevity of success we remember ar rehman longevity of success we remember dr apj abdul kalam longevity of success so therefore if you want longevity in success in your life longevity of success in your life mm-hmm. you have to constantly nurture mm-hmm. your hobbies and passions and that shouldn't be given away at any cost and uh, another very common question that i get is which touches on your point of intent is people losing motivation and it especially happens with people who are taking a gap year ki like the questions that start coming into your mind the doubts what if this doesn't happen what if this is just another year wasted do you have anything on how to keep your um, motivation consistent or anything specially for people who are taking a gap year this is the most amazing question you have asked me mm-hmm. because uh, if you ask me what was my motivation how did i be someone who did not study math for 6 years mm-hmm. and went on to get a reasonable percentile in cat mm-hmm. is because i knew that if i did not do well in cat mm-hmm. i will have to go back to my family business mm-hmm. and the only thing i did not want in my life at that point in time mm-hmm. was to have to go back to my family business i'll stop you right there exactly the same reason i knew if i don't study for cat i will have to continue this job that i absolutely dread and the bad the, the badder the worst day i had in office the more i studied so yeah exactly so when you talk about motivation uh-huh. motivation comes from things where a you have a vision mm-hmm. or b you dread something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. correct absolutely and for some people it could be a combination of both these things mm-hmm. for some people it could just be the pure so i've had mentees on whose rooms they would have a 4 by 4 ka poster of their favorite b schools entrance gate mm-hmm. i've known people who had i am bangalore's you know poster on their wall mm mm-hmm. Uh, I am Ahmedabad poster on, the, on their wall, mm-hmm. ISB's poster mm-hmm. on their wall, mm-hmm. and every morning when they would wake up, they would not, you know, look at God or look at someone else. They would look at that poster that I want mm-hmm. to be at this place. So uh, when you are pursuing a passion for going to a B school, mm-hmm. you need to be able to identify what is your motivation to want to do an MBA. Mm-hmm. Forget why you want to do well at CAT. CAT is only a means to the uh, B school. B school, mm-hmm. right? So look at: Are you doing this for a career transition? Mm-hmm. are you doing this for better career prospects mm-hmm. are you doing this so that you know you can have a much more uh, you know enriching life because you will have better knowledge better network better mm-hmm. people uh, you know mm-hmm. that you'll be working with or are you doing this for better social status because all of us in this stage of life have different reasons why we want to do why we want to do an mba absolutely see one thing about an mba is it opens up flood gates of opportunities for you mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. b it opens up flood gates of network with amazing people mm-hmm. from around the world for you mm-hmm. right the third thing is you assimilate a lot of practical and technical knowledge about various concepts mm-hmm. see honestly you are not going to retain a lot of the, those concepts once you are outside the b school but the idea is not about what you retain mm-hmm. the idea is about going through those experiences mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right so and knowing where you can get back to it right. let's say okay i read about mnas i read about something i forgot but i know the yes. resources to get back to when i want it correct so somewhere. i still it's been mm-hmm. 15 years since i passed out of my mm-hmm. b school mm-hmm. i still continue to maintain the assign, uh, the case study books and all of that from my b school because all of a sudden there is a topic that i could think of mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. i'm like 
of course there is google there is chat gpt mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but nothing beats the old fashioned way of going to a, an a very acknowledged author and going to see what the author think about things about it mm-hmm. uh, philip kotler may have changed the definition of marketing multiple times mm-hmm. but going back to the original definition will always be the right thing to do mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. that still captures the essence what he says today also mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. in not as many words at that point mm-hmm. So just uh, summarizing. So either there'll be something that is that you're looking forward to, that you're aspiring for, or there's something that you're dreading right now in your life. So keep coming back to your reasons. Keep coming back to why you decided to prepare for CAD in the first place, and let that be your daily motivation. Absolutely. And you can take any uh, means to it, be it posters, be it uh, videos, maybe or anything. Today you have so many uh-huh. successful B schoolers mm-hmm. who are at the B school mm-hmm. and who have passed out. people like you mm-hmm. who are doing an amazing work of showing the inside out journey of a b school mm-hmm. every single day mm-hmm. from b schools across the country mm-hmm. so even if you just look up to someone like riya <laughs> right okay. and if that is your motivation that mm-hmm. wow riya is doing an amazing job she's worked at tata steel mm-hmm. she's she's an alum of i am bangalore mm-hmm. she's right now working as a consultant and mm-hmm. if that motivates you mm-hmm. and you aspire mm-hmm. i want to be someone like riya mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. a couple of years mm-hmm. that could be your motivation to keep yeah. keep following that person keep seeking that advice keep understanding what they are doing why they are doing it mm-hmm. how they are doing it but you will have to go through that grind you will have to go yeah, through that grind yeah there is no grind. other shortcut sachin no other sachin tendulkar way. hasn't become sachin tendulkar by directly playing for team india mm-hmm. he started mm-hmm. playing good quality cricket mm-hmm. from the age of 12 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he got into team india at the age of 17 one of the youngest mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. ever to get into the team mm-hmm. so but the fact that he got into team india at the age of 17 doesn't ensure that he will he would have remained in team india for the next 21 years mm-hmm. until he was 38 Mm-hmm. Correct. Mm-hmm. So for those five years from twelve to seventeen, and for twenty-one years from you know seventeen to thirty-eight, uh-huh. he did the grind every single day as if that was his first day on the ground, as if he wouldn't be sure whether he would be taken for the next tournament. Of course, it was a given <laughs> that Sachin would be a part of it, but he wouldn't take it like that. He would want to set an example for the other players in the team, mm-hmm. saying, "I will be at the net practice before the time, and I would stick around till the practice is over." I don't need a coach. I am mm-hmm. the master blaster. I am the world's best cricketer and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I will be there and I will do what it takes to make sure that I give my hundred mm-hmm. percent to my team. And in our case, for preparation for CAT or MBA, I will do my hundred percent mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. A, I don't have to compromise on the quality of the B school that I go to. B, as a result, I don't have to compromise on the quality of the career prospects that I have. Mm-hmm. C, I don't have to compromise on the quality of the network that I will build for myself. And D, I don't have to quali- uh, compromise on the quality of life that will have. I will have Post. after that. Yeah, that that. Imagine directly. going to a cream lade cream B school, mm-hmm. or imagine going to a tier one B school, mm-hmm. or imagine going to a tier two B school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That marginal gap between a cream lade cream and tier one, mm-hmm. and the gap between tier one and tier two mm-hmm. is significant. could not agree more mm-hmm. yes right so you just need that additional effort to be able to make sure that you cross that line from tier 2 to tier 1 mm-hmm. and tier 1 to cream lade cream mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right because today i should not be saying this on a podcast like this we have 20 plus iams so mm-hmm. you could call yourself an iam grad on your linkedin bio mm-hmm. but that wouldn't do any benefit to you at the end mm-hmm. of the day what would matter is what knowledge network mm-hmm. and experiences have you gathered from that journey mm-hmm. and without you know meaning any uh, demeaning any b school mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is clear that there are places where you would get better value for your time than at other places yeah so why not aim for the best yes absolutely mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. would you go to a restaurant that that's not rated 5 but rated 4 you would mm-hmm. always pick the restaurant that's rated 5 mm-hmm. right would you travel in a car that you know makes a lot of sound or would you want to travel in a car that is Much as good better. as uh-huh. you know mm-hmm. the best so therefore when you want the best in everything else in life why mm-hmm. go to a b school mm-hmm. that you don't deserve and it just requires that much little bit extra effort perfect wow we covered cat preparation very extensively now coming to someone who's made it to a b school be it the top notch or tier 1 or tier 2 or tier 3 there are still so many ways where we can maximize our output from that b school no matter what kind of a b school it is and because you've mentored so many i am grad so many b schoolers i want you to 
point us out what are the biggest mistakes misconceptions people uh, students have and what is it that if they do right if they master they will maximize the output that they'll be taking from their b school so we are purely talking from the b school perspective yeah let's say a person has gotten in now right mm -hmm. so one thing that i've been telling people right from the time i passed out of b school mm -hmm. because that is when i started training people for cat and so on and so forth see one thing that is very clear mm -hmm. from your b school journey mm -hmm. is that 99.99% of the times you are going to pass out of your b school successfully <laughs> right okay. no b school uh, has the university system where they will fail x percentage of people or so on and so forth in a b school if you need to fail you need to ask for it and Absolutely. when i say you need to ask for it you you would have deliberately not done certain things not mm -hmm. performed well and mm -hmm. so on and so forth mm -hmm. otherwise if you follow the curriculum if you follow the classroom if you follow the rigor mm -hmm. you will anyways get, get through mm -hmm. so unless you are someone who wants to be the top 5 percentile top 10 percentile of the class mm -hmm. you would anyways even if you are an average mm -hmm. grad you will pass out of b school successfully mm -hmm. so therefore that is something that i want to because a lot of people when they go to the b school they start dreading the entire surprise quiz they start dreading the entire assignment and this and that no life this that no it is about your priority mm -hmm. so when i was at the b school and i'm being very candid here uh, i knew that i did not want to be the best academically mm -hmm. i was very clear about that mm -hmm. and i was always above average mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. whatever my batch's average was i was just a little Slightly notch above about that, that mm -hmm. right but i did not have to put too much stress on the idea that i want to be above, above average i was just doing what was supposed to be done to fulfill the academic requirements and i was through mm -hmm. so what what were my focus areas during my b school journey mm -hmm. three things very specifically and i knew this from my second week of my b school that this is the place these are the places where i want to spend a lot of my time and my energies on a was to participate in as many competitions as possible mm -hmm. you mean case competitions case competitions particularly mm -hmm. why because those open up the windows of understanding problems that are current because mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. case competitions give you a live problem that the company is that facing, the company right, is facing now. right now mm -hmm. right absolutely so this is an opportunity a to understand the current problem mm -hmm. and to think of the current problem in the current way mm -hmm. a b school classroom may teach you a case study from harvard or i am or anywhere else mm -hmm. but that case study might be dated but a case comp gives you a fresh problem with mm -hmm. a fresh perspective with a fresh pair of eyes that you need to look at it from mm -hmm. whether you do well in the case comp whether you win it or not mm -hmm. is not the question mm -hmm. the fact that you are able to think about a current problem mm -hmm. from the prism of what concepts you know and what concepts you don't know which you will learn for this case comp because by the time you are participating in a case comp mm -hmm. you haven't even gone through the courses that are required to be able to take part in that case comp mm -hmm. so therefore what do you do you don't wait for those sessions you learn you educate you, yourself you educate yourself you learn those formulas you learn those concepts you learn mm -hmm. those theories so that you could perform well in the case comp Mm -hmm. a b as a process of the case comp you end up networking listening to mm -hmm. and connecting with a lot of industry veterans mm -hmm. and therefore these are connections and people who can motivate you mentor you guide you support you give you the resources give you the mm -hmm. you know ideas of how you can build a career like them or how you can build a career that you want but they could guide you or support you on that journey c you end up also networking with and learning from peers from other b schools that are not a part of your ecosystem uh -huh, uh -huh. see i always talk about value for uh, roi from b school investment mm -hmm. what is my roi my roi is not my batchmates mm -hmm. so i'm not talking curriculum mm -hmm. i'm not talking about uh, placements and packages mm -hmm. i'm not talking about library this that mm -hmm. i'm talking about roi from the network perspective mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. any b schoolers typical roi is their batchmates their seniors mm -hmm. they spend one year with them mm -hmm. and their juniors they spend mm -hmm. one year with them mm -hmm. so that is your roi in mm -hmm. terms of the network yeah. that you will build yeah. but i am saying why stick with that limited mandate which is available in the vicinity mm -hmm. why not expand your mandate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why not when you go to 10 case comps in a year mm -hmm. there are let us say of 50 other or 70 other people participating from 25 other b schools mm -hmm. so when they are presenting their case and if you are able to witness it you learn from their perspective what ideas did they imbibe in this case comp mm -hmm. which i couldn't think of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what ideas did they work on what is their style of presentation what is their mm -hmm. style of communication mm -hmm. and so many other things that you can learn mm -hmm. during the case comp 
Mm-hmm. And post that you could connect with them, probably collaborate with them. Mm-hmm. So many other windows open up. Mm-hmm. So even if you end up making 10, 20 connections from one case com mm-hmm. across 10 case coms during a year, you make mm-hmm. 200 plus connections. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And therefore, by the time you go to the corporate, mm-hmm. you have 200 connections already out of your B school mm-hmm. from all B schools across from all the country. across the country. Uh-huh. And I can show you a hundred such examples of people that mm-hmm. I have connected with over the years. Mm-hmm. these are people who collaborated with someone from some other b school some other city some other you know thing mm-hmm. and today they are doing something amazing together wow wow so these were your priorities making sure you participate in case competitions finding looking for experts mentors and networking right anything else that you have so like, i i told you three things yeah. a is the case comp which i explained in detail mm-hmm, mm-hmm. b i wanted to spend as much time as possible uh-huh. on clubs and committees Uh-huh, okay. because as a part of clubs and committees b schools have this amazing ecosystem mm-hmm. where we do events where we do guest lectures where we do a, a variety of things seminars seminars fest, fest all, a lot of all things, kinds of things yeah. so for me the proof is always in the pudding mm-hmm. right if i am a management aspirant mm-hmm. right what is management it is able it, it is the ability to do something mm-hmm. from scratch mm-hmm. to the end mm-hmm. and to own the entire process and to do it with elan not mm-hmm. just get done with it mm-hmm. so when you are a part of a club or a committee in a b school and if you are in a leadership role you are working with a team you are learning leadership you are learning mm-hmm. working with teams mm-hmm. you are learning problem solving you are learning facing challenges you are mm-hmm. learning how to gather funds for it you are learning mm-hmm. how to disperse that fund mm-hmm. how to make mm-hmm. the maximum mm-hmm. utilization mm-hmm. of that fund you are learning how to communicate how to present how to be an mc so depending on what niches you want to grow in you pick those roles while you are in those clubs and committees mm-hmm. so for example when i joined my b school i was pathetic at communication surprising i wouldn't stand in front of a person i and i would be nervous my legs would be shaking uh-huh. and i wanted to overcome exactly that i told myself that by the time i get out of my b school mm-hmm. i will ensure that i could face an audience and i could do that with real confidence so during my b school very focusedly very deliberately for every case presentation in the classroom mm-hmm. not for case comps to begin mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. in the classroom i would tell my group of 5 or 6 whatever it was that i would present this case study for today's session most people would dread it that no 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 i want you do it you do it <laughs> and because i wanted to overcome this challenge mm-hmm. i would tell my group i know i'm not good at this but i want to try mm-hmm. because i may fail but i will only fail in front of 60 people who are my batchmates mm-hmm. yeah. and that's all right So by doing that multiple times, I created a canvas for myself, where I could test myself multiple times. I could secure feedback from the professor, from my peers, and from my own, uh, you know, observation of my performance. And twice, thrice, fourth time, fifth time, I was very confident. In fact, in my B school, at the point when I was studying, we did not have an E cell. Mm-hmm. So I am the founder, president of the E cell of my B school. Mm-hmm. The E cell of my B school is my brainchild. Mm-hmm. so because i i have always been an entrepreneurial guy mm-hmm. and i would go to other people in my batch and say hey this is some business idea that i like or this is a startup that i am following what do you think and so on and so forth and i would have to struggle to run behind people and find who would be interested in this conversation who would be interested in building this b plan with me mm-hmm. and i built five or six b plans while while i was at b school with mm-hmm. multiple people so then it dawned on me that why do i have to knock people's doors every time i need to talk about a startup because at that point there was the startup ecosystem wasn't there mm-hmm. like it is today mm-hmm. so i went on to create the e cell for my b school mm-hmm. because only interested people will join and you have the like minded people absolutely so mm-hmm. i gathered a large bunch of people from my batch mm-hmm. who only i figured at that point that oh my god all these are people who are interested in startups who are interested in entrepreneurship mm-hmm. and so on so forth so we created a culture that every fortnight we will do a meeting from this time to this time where we will talk about successful startups failed startups successful entrepreneurs new business models new business ideas and so on and so forth mm-hmm. and i learned so much from each one of their wisdoms in fact we would provide platforms to my fellow batchmates mm-hmm. to present their b plans to this platform mm-hmm. so that when they went for other b plan competitions across the country mm-hmm. they would have tested their b plan already in house to Get realize what back. all you mm-hmm. know questions they may get what mm-hmm, all mm-hmm. Uh, problems loopholes loopholes and all of that uh-huh. so by the time they went to the outside world they had enough brick brick bats that get, that that faced and therefore they were able to do a much better job out of their entire you know competition that otherwise they wouldn't have so my second objective was to actively take mm-hmm. part 
in club committee activities mm -hmm. and take leadership role mm -hmm. take initiatives most important and i want to emphasize here is that of course we we've been hearing this to get into clubs committees but i've seen a lot of people do that just for that one cv point not not because they are interested or anything but because if you are in a consulting club you will have a better shot and that is not the case unless you actually take some learning out of it so let me say this very clear and loud mm -hmm. if you are doing this for a cv point mm -hmm. please don't do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is not your your recruiter isn't even looking at it <laughs> from that perspective mm -hmm. because when you say member X committee mm -hmm. or leader or some other representative X committee mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that one sentence means nothing. Mm -hmm. If I say I am cricket enthusiast or I am this enthusiast, what does that word mean to anyone? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. What have I done in that field? And that could be shown through the courses, through the internships, through the projects and other mm -hmm, such things mm -hmm. that you have done, rather than just saying that I am a member. Mm -hmm. So I could be a member of a thousand associations or a thousand forums, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean anything about my talent or my expertise in that field. Absolutely. Right. So if you're doing this, which is to join a club or a committee as a member mm -hmm. for the sake of a CV point, it is a clear cut answer. Don't. Mm -hmm. Please ensure that while you're in the B school, you use that platform to really nurture your personality. Because a club committee brings you a lot of opportunities to deal with different management elements. You could be managing money. You could be managing people. You could be man you could be uh, building marketing. your communication, uh -huh. marketing, mm -hmm. operations, a whole lot of things, mm -hmm. right? So depending on whatever niche that you want to nurture for yourself, mm -hmm. not for the college, not for your peers, not for the club, not for the committee, for yourself, mm -hmm. right? Do that, mm -hmm. correct? And therefore, that exposure will open up a lot of windows for you. Okay. Now, how did I end up becoming a cat faculty because I had all this experience of hosting, communicating to B school level people every single day for those two years mm -hmm. that I could face a crowd on a subject that I was not the best at mm -hmm. because it just built that entire confidence in me that I could face an audience on a topic that I am good at or even at a topic that I am not good at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. In fact, I have this belief you give me a topic and you give me enough time, mm -hmm. I could present that topic better than an expert at that topic, guaranteed. Wow. Because see, ultimately what it takes is understanding an idea in the simplest form. Mm -hmm. And then again, presenting the same idea in the simplest form. Mm -hmm. An expert will give you very technical jargons, which you may not understand. Mm -hmm. But if you give me a topic or a problem or a thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will take it up. I will look at material that explains it in the most lucid form mm -hmm. and I will reconstruct it in a way which is the most easiest to communicate mm -hmm. and to comprehend for the end user. That is something that I picked up. Mm -hmm. Coming back to yeah, the three pointers. Uh, so first case is competition. case competitions, second is clubs committees mm -hmm. and the third is most importantly network. Now, most people have mm -hmm. a misconception about network. Mm -hmm. They believe that I have added someone on LinkedIn <laughs> network. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, met someone network. I have mm -hmm. done this network. No. Mm -hmm. One thing that I did, which was unique to my B school journey, which none of my other batchmates, I believe did, or none of the other people that I have mentored over the years did. Mm -hmm. I made sure that I had a working relationship with every single batchmate. So what I would do is because all courses that we do in a B school require multiple groups. You to be a part in. Yes. Right. Group projects, group class projects and all of that. Uh -huh. So. Typically what happens is people have their preset groups even before an assignment or a project is announced. Mm -hmm. Okay, Yogesh, Yogesh will be a part of this group with ABCD. Rhea, Rhea will be a part of this group ABCD. So I faced this in the first couple of months. From the third month, I made it a conscious choice that a group that I've already been a part of, mm -hmm. I will not be a part of that group. Mm -hmm. They might be my best friends. Mm -hmm. They might be whoever it is, mm -hmm. but I wanted to explore the idea of working with the best people and the toughest people. Because when you are in the corporate in the future, mm -hmm. you will have to work with all sorts of people, people you align with, people you don't align with, people who will listen to you, people who will not listen to you, people who are hard to work with, people who are hard to extract work from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The free riders. <laughs> right. The, and most of them are that. <laughs> oh, yes. Correct. So for every case study, every project, every group assignment that we had, mm -hmm. I would ensure that I find two kinds of people. Two parameters I would look at. Is this person really good at this subject or idea? Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. so that I could learn from this person in the journey of doing that assignment or that group work, mm-hmm. so that I could extradite their knowledge mm-hmm. in the process. Mm-hmm. So that is one parameter I would look at. Second, I would look at is this someone I have worked with already? Mm-hmm. If yes, is it necessary that I work with this person again? If no, then I would look at okay, I have not worked with Ria so far. Mm-hmm. So let me work on this project with Ria. So I would reach out to Ria and I say. I would say, Ria, uh, I I hope you have not made your team so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you be interested to work with me? And as a result, I would give the other person a chance mm-hmm. to see my value to the team mm-hmm. for yeah. the team. Yeah. Right. And therefore, in such a way, I ended up working with almost everyone in my batch. And therefore, I worked with the toughest people. Got work extracted from them. Mm-hmm. I worked with the perfectionist who would you know suck your blood until they have that. <laughs> Dot and comma in the place, uh-huh. and still managed finishing that project with them mm-hmm. with all the uh, you know uh, mm. stuff. So therefore, your B school is your opportunity to explore how you can. Work. And once you work with someone on an entire assignment or a case study or a project, mm-hmm. you already have a kind of a you know good relationship rapport with that person, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? And after that, you only build on that Absolutely. because that brings out your human side. In front of them and their human side in front of you. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. even today, I can tell you, I can call up any of my batchmates, any of my seniors, any of my juniors at two in the night, and they would pick up my call in one ring without thinking twice. Why? Because they know my human side. Mm-hmm. They know that if this guy is calling, there is the right intent behind this call, mm-hmm. or there is some genuine need mm-hmm. behind this call, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And I'm not, you know, uh, just pranking them or something like that. So therefore, building that image. Mm-hmm. Because later, future, when you are in the corporate, brand. yes, absolutely. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. When you are in the corporate, you need these connections. I know so many people; they have studied in the best B schools in the country or the world, and they have their uh, peers who have studied with them in the same batch. But when they need something out of them, just a referral or just a query about something that they are good at, they hesitate to reach out to them because they never spoke to them while they were in the campus. Or they might have spoken to them. It was only at a very nascent level. They never mm-hmm. really bonded, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? So obviously they would first hesitate to reach out to them. B, even if they took the courage to reach out to them, the other person may or may not respond. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So what is the point of being a part of an ecosystem mm-hmm. where you cannot exploit? Is the word that I'm using deliberately where you cannot exploit the connections that you have there served on a platter to you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And these are people who are going to tomorrow work in Fortune 500 companies, mm-hmm. right? At very top positions. Top positions. These mm-hmm. are people who are going to be CXOs in the next decade, decade or two, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? And there's no harm in having a working relationship with as many people as possible. So my third clear intent mm-hmm, mm-hmm. during my B school journey mm-hmm. was to have a very good rapport, mm-hmm. a very good working relationship and bond mm-hmm. with everyone, my batchmates, my seniors, Nine my juniors. juniors. The consulting company that I told you, where I was a partner, mm-hmm. is a place where I was a partner with a super senior. How on earth could a super senior know you at the first place? Because they leave the campus and then you come to the campus, mm-hmm. so there's no interaction that way. Mm-hmm. So imagine a super senior reaching out to me five years after passing out mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. saying, "Hey, I want you to be a part of my consulting boutique firm," and having that confidence in me. That okay, this guy would do justice to our business. That's because of the kind of rapport I built with him over alumni meets, not even during the campus, mm-hmm. over alumni meets and you know reconnecting and stuff like that. So that is why people say your network is your net worth. I want to just hold on to this point a little more. So you said okay, group projects, presentations. When you're working with someone, yeah, you tend to bond. What are other ways in which you can bond with your batchmates, even if let's say you're not working with them? Amazing question. This is a current problem that one of my mentee mm-hmm. in one of India's best B school is facing. She called me last week mm-hmm. and literally was on the verge of crying. She mm-hmm. just held on to her emotions. Mm-hmm. She was like, "Yogesh, I'm in this B school for the last couple of months. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that I am facing a problem with this: I don't have friends here. Mm-hmm. 180, 200 people plus in the batch, mm-hmm. and she says, 'I don't have friends here, mm-hmm. which means you have a long 20-hour day, and you don't have anyone to walk up to and say, 'Hey, my day was good or bad, or I'm facing this issue, or I'm facing this challenge, or I'm doing this or that.' Mm-hmm. And I asked her, 'Why do you say this?' She said. Everyone, as soon as we came in here, mm-hmm. everyone formed their own groups, mm-hmm. either based on their region 
mm-hmm. or their linguistic background mm-hmm. south indians mm-hmm. north mm-hmm. indians not just south indians in that also yeah, so the sex i i'm i'm giving it yeah. a very uh, uh, yeah. large this thing so keralites tamil tamilians kannadigas mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. so linguistic thing mm-hmm. b or it could be based on their background in terms of their previous work so all engineers would probably get together people working who work with cognizant infosys and all mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. right and she did not want to be a part of any of these groups mm-hmm. and she did not feel attached to any of these groups Mm-hmm. so therefore no one was left everyone was a part of some group or the other mm-hmm. right so this is the exact solution i gave her and which i am going to give you right now wow i asked her three question two questions a what are your hobbies and passions mm-hmm. leave the curriculum leave clubs and committees mm-hmm. leave everything else mm-hmm. a what are your hobbies and passions b who are the other people in your batch who nurture similar hobbies and passions based on whatever interactions you have had so far in the mm-hmm. campus for example you may love badminton mm-hmm. so there might be people who are playing badminton in the campus correct so so far i don't know whether you have been playing badminton or not mm-hmm. but if you have not mm-hmm. go this is your start. time this is your time uh-huh. so identify when they play badminton mm-hmm. be there at that spot at that point mm-hmm. and start playing mm-hmm. and use that opportunity to open up to these people mm-hmm. for those 45 minutes while you're playing badminton mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just let it be your thing a you're also fulfilling your hobby mm-hmm. b that badminton group is your group for that duration i'm not asking you to make that a group obviously mm-hmm. that won't become a group mm-hmm. but at least for those 45 minutes to 1 hour these are people you really feel comfortable with mm-hmm. and you can open up to them about the game about your understanding of the game about their understanding of the game you could learn you could discuss other things so like that I asked her to work on this. So there are three or four hobbies, passions that we identified, mm-hmm. which are workable in the campus, mm-hmm. and which she found other people who also do that. Mm-hmm. And based on common interests, now she spends that thirty minutes, forty-five minutes on one of those activities every day mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. these people. So no curriculum, no case study, no club committee, just hobby, passion discussions, mm-hmm. and that itself is a huge thing. Yes. Some of the startups that have come up in India. have come up because two founders who are big founders today bonded on something that was non technical non startup oriented and they just you know enjoyed their Hit each other's off. company uh-huh. in that thing and today they have a unicorn wow there are so many so, such and also when the other person is sensing that okay there's no hidden agenda Absolutely. here they let off their guard this is a huge point uh-huh. i forgot to mention this yes in a b school a lot of people have their guards on yes. Yes. because they believe that people come with an agenda yeah this is it's a competition correct and a a lot of people in b school also have this competition mindset mm-hmm. yes. and i hate that competition mindset why are you competing on anything mm-hmm. you there want is to, enough opportunity yeah, for everyone enough opportunity across spectrum for everyone yes all of us can go, grow together mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so sometimes when i used to have certain resources or certain uh, you know mm-hmm. things and i used to share them on the group uh, email of the batch some people used to tell me yogesh why did you do that mm-hmm. this is something that you could have kept with yourself and just shared with me so that you know we could have been better prepared on this i'm like this material is useless mm-hmm. even for me mm-hmm. if i don't pursue it mm-hmm. if i don't read it mm-hmm. right so just the fact that i have given someone this material doesn't mean that they will be very good at that mm-hmm. they also have to go forward and invest their time and mm-hmm. energy mm-hmm. on learning that idea mm-hmm. and the fact that i had access to something and i've given it to them and i can they can do well on it because they spent their time mm-hmm, on doing it mm-hmm. thanks to them mm-hmm. not thanks to me mm-hmm. because they have found out that this is something that is valuable mm-hmm. and they have invested their time in it mm-hmm. so they deserve all the attention success, success that comes out of it that comes out of it mm-hmm. so please feel free to share with your batchmates whatever good that you have that, that's it such will, a valuable point it will only help you more no one is your competition you and only you are your own competition mm-hmm. 100% mm-hmm. this resource point that you touched upon brings me to the other uh, endeavor that you are pursuing the the broadcast group where you uh, send out resources tell us how that happened and also touch on the conversation that we had last night how that led in, led you to realizing that these resources are not of much value unless and until they are helping people either make a switch or when they actually need Uh, actually need some kind of a job out of it so please walk us through that and how that is helping you build a network and help people so this is a secret i have been harboring for the last 7 8 years now uh-huh. right uh, 
I so, know that secret. So, <laughs> right. uh-huh. so you've been a part of this journey for more than two years yes, now, yes. two two and a half years, right? So, uh, like I told you, I used to be a corporate trainer, and I used to do a lot of training sessions every mm-hmm. now and then. And in most of my training sessions, I would talk with a lot of facts, figures, and numbers with authentic sources. Mm-hmm. And in a lot of these sessions, people would walk back to me and say, "Yogesh, you quoted this number and you quoted the source, but mm-hmm. how did you get it? Mm-hmm. We didn't have access to such information. This idea is not published in any newspaper or any other uh, mm-hmm. media or social mm-hmm. media or something mm-hmm. like that." how did you get access to it and so one habit that i built right from my b school journey is to do two things a i started reading books so it it is a target or a, a, a purpose that i want to read at least 3 to 4 books a month right now that journey has you know significantly come down but consciously i like to read books mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. so i read books b i read magazines mm-hmm. business magazines mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right and i keep altering between the best magazines to find out can you name them uh, yeah. so a lot of magazines business india business world fortune forbes mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. i don't buy a magazine from its name based mm-hmm. on its name mm-hmm. i go to a bookstore mm-hmm. i pick up a magazine mm-hmm. i look at its index page mm-hmm. and i look at the 20 topics that are listed on the index page mm-hmm. and i try to identify which magazine has topics of these 20 topics which magazine has the maximum number of topics Mm-hmm. that are interesting or exciting to me because when i need to read something i need to find excitement and interest in that subject mm-hmm. so i would look at the index page of every magazine that i want to choose from mm-hmm. and then based on the magazine that provides me the largest value for my time mm-hmm. in terms of mm-hmm. my excitement my interest in mm-hmm. that area mm-hmm. i would pick up that mm-hmm. so i would buy two magazines every fortnight so mm-hmm. four magazines a month which is approximately 400 to 500 rupees a month mm-hmm. 6000 rupees a year mm-hmm. and i can guarantee you challenge you if you make this investment of 6000 rupees a month a year a year i'm sorry mm-hmm. 500 rupees a month 6000 rupees a year mm-hmm. you will see a better confidence in yourself b better opportunities that will open up to you you will share far more insightful ideas and concepts in your work environment and d as a result of all of these first three things you will get better packages and better opportunities mm-hmm. faster than mm-hmm. the rest of your peers mm-hmm. i wanted to quote numbers here but i don't want to quote numbers because then you know people catch on hold on to numbers the idea is not behind the numbers the idea is the fact that because your level of knowledge is in a is at another level mm-hmm. you attract better opportunities and people are willing to compensate you mm-hmm. more for it absolutely right uh-huh, uh-huh. there have hardly been gds in life that i have not done well at there have hardly been interviews in life that i have not done well at why because all in all of these opportunities i present i present facts i present numbers and i present data that is authentic mm-hmm. verified from mm-hmm. the horse's mouth mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right so these are two sources third most important source that is important in on our li- in all our lives today is the internet now on the internet it is very difficult for me to point out that i go to website a b or c when you are an avid learner Mm-hmm. not reader mm-hmm. learner i call myself an avid learner mm-hmm. so i look at a topic that is in the real uh, you know realm of conversation today mm-hmm. and i pick up who are the best experts in the world on that issue mm-hmm. so i would go to their social media i would go to their website i would go to their organizations website or whatever else that is and look at what is their point of view a uh, case in example for example uh, when a big ipo is happening mm-hmm. right for example when zomato ipo was happening mm-hmm. where do you think i would have gone mm. zomato's website depend go obviously so i uh-huh. i had the dhrp uh, uh-huh. yeah, of, the red herring prospectus the red prospect- prospectus of zomato mm-hmm. but to understand zomato from a completely different standpoint mm-hmm. i would go to professor aswad damodaran's website uh-huh. on valuation on valuation uh-huh. because he would say that this is where the food industry is going this is what the delivery model has a failure so he had given certain numbers that day that zomato is very overvalued and so on and so forth he was right for a very long time but today professor damodaran seems to be wrong mm-hmm. because zomato's price is 7x what he quoted was the real value mm-hmm. but people fail to understand mm-hmm. that at that point zomato did not own linkit mm-hmm. mm-hmm. at that point zomato had a lot of other variations in their business model mm-hmm. and after that once you know a lot of things became clearer a lot of uh, the the quick commerce came in mm-hmm, a lot mm-hmm. of other things came in zomato really adapted itself to all of that and the valuation of zomato today is mm-hmm. 7x what the real value 
Professor Damodaran claimed. But the question is not whether Professor Damodaran is right or wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, the question mm -hmm. is the perspective that he brings. The ideas that he uses to value a food delivery startup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Correct. So imagine if I understand from Professor Damodaran how a delivery platform needs to be assessed. Mm -hmm. I'm also able to assess other platforms. Absolutely. Right. So mm -hmm. I learn the... Mm -hmm. Knack from, I, yeah, yeah, don't just do it for one. If you learn the process, exactly. you can do it for any company. Exactly. So similarly like that, based on whatever subject that I'm looking at, uh -huh. I look at who is the best expert at this, which organization publishes the best reports on this. For example, Kantar publishes the brand report every year. Mm -hmm. So I make it a point to read the entire report mm -hmm. to understand how they are rating these brands, what parameters are they using, what is mm -hmm. their sample size, mm -hmm. uh, which brands are going up which brands are going down mm -hmm. uh, what do they what have they done in this period what products have they launched so i try to understand the in-depth mm -hmm. definition mm -hmm. of all of that mm -hmm. so that i can make informed decisions in whatever i do mm -hmm. people think that i am belonging to a certain profession today and for me some of this information is not relevant because anyways i am not doing that no it's not that today all industries all domains are interconnected mm -hmm. for example most of us are non-technical people and AI was irrelevant to us a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. But today, tell me a domain or a stream or a company mm -hmm. that can say that AI doesn't affect me. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. AI has captured our imagination in any and every stream of our life, not just profession or business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? AI just changes everything. Now, there are naysayers and there are people who believe that AI could disrupt. Correct? Mm -hmm. But the idea is neither to believe in the naysayers nor to you know mm -hmm. believe in the uh, people who say AI that AI will, will disrupt everything. Uh -huh. It is to understand what AI is trying to do mm -hmm. and how. Mm -hmm. And not just that, how can I adapt and adopt mm -hmm. what AI offers for my career, for my growth, for my domain. Mm -hmm. And as long as I am able to do that, whether AI has a doomsday, Mm -hmm. or AI disrupts, mm -hmm. I'm game because I know what it is and how mm -hmm. it works. I, I have taken something or the other from Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So this entire broadcast started uh -huh. coming back to the original question. Yes. Uh, in one of my training sessions, a lot of people were pestering me uh -huh. that Yogesh, you've quoted so many authentic numbers today. We want to know your sources. Can mm -hmm. you tell me what all you read? So books and magazines I can quote mm -hmm. and that too from time to time I can quote. But online sources, I can't quote mm. because they keep changing from time to time. For example, mm -hmm. for Zomato, I would have gone to Professor Aswad Damodaran. For some other, uh, you know, uh, company's IPO, I may go to some other professional who is good at that particular industry. Mm -hmm. Correct. So I said, okay, let me do one thing. I read a lot of stuff online every day. Mm -hmm. So I will pick up the best content that I read, not everything that I read, because that's a huge list. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to fathom so much content. Mm -hmm. So from what all I... I read, I will pick up five to seven pieces of content mm -hmm. and then I will share it on a broadcast, not a group because mm -hmm. I didn't want the chaos of having too many people speaking. Mm -hmm. And I also didn't want to have a group where I have logged so that no one can speak. So I started this as a broadcast mm -hmm. where the message will be delivered as if it is a personal chat from me mm -hmm. delivered mm -hmm. to your mm -hmm. inbox mm -hmm. telling you that, hey, I read this article, see if this interests you. Mm. And the articles would range from finance to marketing to data mm -hmm. to PM mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. economy to mm -hmm. everything. And I want to sp stop you right there. And I have used so many of your resources for a lot of the case comms that I have participated in. I'm, I'm going through the internet to look for research, but I'm like, okay, just let me look, search this uh, keyword in Yogesh's chat. And almost always I have found something very credible in the research. That's very kind of you. And, and then there was a point when uh, like, a few months ago, the market got very bad and all the layoffs started to come surface. And yeah, you were telling how people reached out to you and you realizing that what is the use of all this if if it can't help people get jobs. Absolutely. So tell us how uh, that initiative happened. And in general, for people looking for a switch, for people trying to upscale, what advice do you have for them? Okay. Uh, so the first question, Ria, where you asked me about the opportunities group that I started mm -hmm. uh, from the month of January to March I started getting a lot of panic calls mm -hmm. from people who were being laid off from people who had jobs that they were not seeing any growth in from people who had uh, hardly any uh, you know support in their organization and so on and so forth so I started getting multiple calls or uh, you know DMs on my LinkedIn on my WhatsApp every day about people wanting to take a switch or mm -hmm. wanting to actually have an opportunity. They have a degree mm -hmm. from a B school, from an undergraduate college, university, 
but they don't have a job mm-hmm. so i was thinking to myself i am doing so many mentoring sessions training programs i am running this broadcast what is the use of all of this knowledge and gyan mm-hmm. if someone cannot find a job on themselves mm-hmm. correct mm-hmm. and this is a really bad market yes no one trains you how to find a job mm-hmm. so that is where i took a call that i will start an opportunities group on whatsapp mm-hmm. across domains mm-hmm. across experience levels mm-hmm. across educational backgrounds mm-hmm. but only constant would be that i will give you new authentic verified jobs every single day so i share almost 20 to 40 jobs every day on that group with people who are undergrads or who are already studying in uh-huh. colleges and uh-huh. i am giving them internship opportunities mm-hmm. or mbas mm-hmm. again internship opportunities project opportunities for them mm-hmm. or mbas who passed out and are looking to you know get into a job they mm-hmm. come from tier 1 2 or 3 b schools mm-hmm. or existing professionals who are already in a company or have been laid off but want a better opportunity mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i post these jobs every single day on the group mm-hmm. and there are hundreds of people who are a part of this journey for the last 3 months i started this group in april mm-hmm. so 4 months now in fact mm-hmm. so and a lot of people have been able to find their dream job from the group i have also supported a lot of them on doing a cv review or doing a set of mock interviews or giving them some career guidance mm-hmm. so it works hand in hand mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. they find the right opportunity they want to know how to write a cold email to that hr mm-hmm. they want to know is my cv good enough mm-hmm. what changes should mm-hmm. i make mm-hmm. or everything else in is in place but i have never given an interview in a long time can you help me with a mock interview mm-hmm. so i try to help each of these people based on whatever they believe is they need support on and i'm able to Wow. do just that wow wow that that, that that that's so valuable that, that 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 is actually changing lives of people like you said what's the use if it's not landing them something and you're now helping them land something so one more thing we covered mba and students uh, how can they upskill how can uh, optimize their journey but what about let's say someone who is in a tier 2 tier 3 undergraduate college be it uh, a degree college or engineering how you see uh, them learning new skills finding new opportunities upskilling plus anyone who's uh, started their career with a very menial job and they want to learn something new and upskill make that leap so what have been your observations around that any way you think you can help them amazing i think them? this question could be the highlight of this entire discussion today mm-hmm. right so i will split the answer in two parts mm-hmm. a for people who are in college or b school mm-hmm. i will summarize it mm-hmm. in one bucket for them mm-hmm. b for corporate professionals mm-hmm. a lot of elements are similar but mm-hmm. i will still try to differentiate wherever required so first we'll start with the students mm-hmm. so whether you are a student from an undergraduate college or a b school mm-hmm. and irrespective of whether you come from tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 college or b school mm-hmm. uh, i will first break one myth a lot of people believe that hey i come from a tier 2 college tier 3 college I don't see any scope for me or my career because I don't have access to any opportunities. I don't know what's happening. I haven't even figured out what I want. Mm-hmm. So let me help you understand what is the difference between a tier one college and a tier two or three college. A tier one college gives you better access to the information to all of these ecosystems, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. A tier two or three college doesn't give you access to any of this information because no one is telling you those things. so mm-hmm. all i want you to sort for yourself mm-hmm. is nothing but find the access to that information mm-hmm. now how could you find the access to that information a from the internet c one big difference between my time and today mm-hmm. is that today you have youtube channels instagram channels linkedin accounts topmate accounts mm-hmm. and so much more mm-hmm. where people are sharing with you so many opportunities so many avenues so many ecosystems where you can exercise your uh you know uh, option to avail a certain certificate course or a certain mm-hmm. degree or a certain mm-hmm. uh, project or whatever it is mm-hmm. correct so even if you come from a tier 2 tier 3 college or b school ensure a which domain or field do you want to build your expertise or your skill set in once you have figured that out try to connect to people who are active in that space mm-hmm. also try to connect with people in that space from tier 1 colleges mm-hmm. and try to make good friends with them Mm-hmm. so that they can share with you whatever they are participating in whatever they are exercising mm-hmm. and therefore you can also participate in the same competitions mm-hmm. in the same seminars and conclaves mm-hmm. pursue the same courses mm-hmm. pursue the same opportunities that they have access to mm-hmm. the difference is only in the access at the end of the day a tier 1 student mm-hmm. also has to do the hard work to mm-hmm. be able to succeed in that avenue mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a tier 2 or 3 also has to do the hard work 
Mm-hmm. Now the mm-hmm. difference between both these people is only the access to information. Mm-hmm. And now with internet, with social media, mm-hmm. access is not a problem at all. Mm-hmm. If you are someone who's really interested, really intentful, mm-hmm. you will find the access. And also I will accept the fact that, okay, there are some opportunities that only say certain colleges can apply. Agreed, there are some opportunities Absolutely. like that. But it does not discount the fact that there are a dearth of other opportunities yes. open for all. Correct. So Correct. please be aware of that. Absolutely. So don't let, okay, let's say there's mm-hmm. a big corporate firm that says I will only take entries in this competition from mm-hmm. colleges A, B, C, D, E. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. But there are a thousand other companies mm-hmm. doing the same domain competition, mm-hmm. which is open for all. The more inclusive ones, the, the people who know that the best ideas don't necessarily come only from Absolutely. Absolutely. certain colleges. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So now I will uh, extend the answer to the earlier question. A, I have sorted out the myth part, the mm-hmm. access question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, what can I do as an undergraduate student or a B-schooler uh-huh. while I am at college uh-huh. so that I make my career prospects better? A, there is no exception to this rule that each individual who wants a professional career needs to read one book, 30 pages of one, any book of their choice every single day. Mm -hmm. Can you give yourself 30 minutes every day, any part of the day, morning, evening, afternoon, night, your choice, your place, your Mm -hmm. time, Mm -hmm. 30 pages of one book every day. That book could be on your favorite sports person. I don't care. Mm -hmm. That book could be about your favorite Bollywood actor. I don't care. Mm -hmm. That book could be about politics. I don't care. I want you to build the habit of reading for 30 minutes every single day. And once you start doing that, I am confident that eventually you will move to better subjects. But to get you started, Uh I am trying to enthuse you Uh by asking you to read about your favorite star. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The idea is to start building a habit of reading for 30 minutes every day. And 30 minutes essentially is nothing but 30 pages every day. Right? And by which I can guarantee you that you will be able to read four books a month because 30 pages a day would mean 210 pages a week. Mm -hmm. An average book is anywhere between 150 to 220 pages. Mm -hmm. So therefore you will cover one book in a week and three to four books a month. Mm -hmm. In other words, you Mm -hmm. have the prospect of completing Mm -hmm. 50 books a year. Imagine yourself being Uh an individual who has read 50 books in a year. Can you imagine yourself doing that? Yeah, Forget the person 50. at the beginning of the year and the person at the end of yes. the year, um, huge difference. Forget 50. Years. Let me give you a 50% off for a moment. <laughs> Even if you end up reading 25 books a year, mm-hmm. two books a month, that's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Two books a month would mean 25 books a year. Imagine yourself as this individual who has all that knowledge, all that clarity, all that wisdom from some of the best experts in any given domains, mm-hmm. right? You could be a different person altogether. So number one is start reading books. Mm -hmm. Number two, once you've identified the niche that you want to build your career in, Mm -hmm. start picking up free or paid courses. I don't have any bias towards free or paid courses. I have a bias towards who has curated that course. What is the content of that course? What is the practicality of the content of that course? I don't want very theoretical courses. I want hands-on courses that help me with live examples, live case studies with hands-on assignments where I can, you know, do something and show. Imagine you're doing a social media marketing course Mm -hmm. and you don't have to put up a social media post. Mm -hmm. What is the use of that course? Mm -hmm. Or imagine you want to learn swimming, but Mm -hmm. you never even get to touch water in a pool. (laughs) So please, the only parameter for choosing a course, whether free or paid, Uh is to see, does that course allow me to understand or do that concept hands-on? In mm-hmm. any which ways, through an assignment, through a case study, whatever it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But let me understand real realism of that idea. Right. So second is to start doing courses, mm-hmm. certificate or no, doesn't matter. A lot of people do courses. Every week I come across people saying, mm-hmm. sir, I have five courses that I've listed on my CV. Now will my CV get shortlisted? I tell them those four courses don't determine whether your CV will get shortlisted or not. Mm-hmm. Because the fact that you've completed the course is not what matters. How much well, do you understand that concept is what matters? And as an interviewer, it will take me 30 seconds to know how much you know. Mm-hmm. So you list four courses, you list 40 courses. That's mm-hmm. not the part of the equation. Mm-hmm. The equation is how well do you understand a certain concept or an idea? And how well can you apply or implement that in real life? That is what matters. So the second is to do a course, a set of courses. So imagine even if you take up one course a quarter, I'm being very lenient here. 
one course in a quarter four courses, four courses a year a three years of undergraduation 12 courses in three years is amazing and spread it across the niches and spread it across the additional skills that you need mm -hmm, mm -hmm. correct if you are a b schooler again you have six trimesters while you are at the b school three trimesters each year at least six courses in those two years of your b school mm -hmm. right that would be amazing for your you know building a profile of your uh, desired choice desired choice mm -hmm. so second is courses third i can not emphasize more on the importance of a combination of life projects mm -hmm. and internships mm -hmm. a lot of people always believe that i want to do an internship but it only has to come from a big four or an, or an mbb or an fmcg brand marketing this that mm -hmm. don't fall for those traps always try to see where can i get real responsibility about a certain thing mm -hmm. because i'm not saying that you should not do an internship at these firms you should definitely do it if you get an opportunity but if you don't get an opportunity you should not give it up there is what mm -hmm, i'm trying to convey mm -hmm. here ki ye nahi hua to kuch nahi karenge ha sir pwc mein nahi hua mujhe nahi karni internship mm -hmm. are pwc nahi there are many other audit firms or you know consulting firms that mm -hmm. also do similar work and there you will get a lot more hands on experience also mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so zaruri nahi hai that if you want to excel so i always ask this one question to my mentees do you want to start your career with company x which is your you know mm -hmm. desired company mm -hmm. or do you want to spend the maximum time in your life working for this company is mm -hmm. it option a which is more important for you mm -hmm. or is it option b which is more important for you interesting okay. for example uh -huh. give me your dream company uh, let's just say let's, <laughs> let's just say, say google okay. google okay. right so the question is is it more important for you to start your career with google mm -hmm. or is it more important for you to know that i will be spending the maximum period of my career working at google mm -hmm. which is more important the latter the latter mm -hmm. so some people believe that mera google mein hua hi nahi to life barbad ho gaya like kangna ranaut says mm -hmm. right it's not like that for you to be eligible for google mm -hmm. you need a certain skill set mm -hmm. you need a certain set of things that you have exposed yourself to in the past mm -hmm. to be able to crack that interview to be able to you know get your interview uh, your uh, cv shortlisted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. correct so build those foundations for yourself and then you don't need to find google google will find you once you have that mm -hmm. right Certainly. and once you are inside google you will have to tell them that i need to go out they will not you know push you out unless and until you are not taking care of certain basics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. correct so always focus on this idea that if i do the right number and quality of internships and live projects i will be exposed to the real world skills that are required to succeed That's in right. any function mm -hmm. correct and as far as you have them let me try to explain this through a simple but beautiful example why were the bunsels able to create flipkart or how were the bunsels able to create flipkart mm -hmm. because they were working at amazon before that so they had the hands on experience of knowing mm -hmm. how an e-commerce platform runs functions mm -hmm. and with that knowledge of having worked at amazon mm -hmm. they said chalo let us build something called flipkart which is a book delivery app when they started uh -huh. flipkart was only a book delivery app at that point they listed books and if you are in bangalore because they started only with certain pin codes at bangalore mm -hmm. and they said if you are at bangalore and if you live in these pin codes mm -hmm. we can deliver you the the book of your choice we will also give you some discount mm -hmm. and the bunsel bunsels would hand deliver those books themselves when they started So now imagine if a mahamoth like flipkart today started because two people working in a certain company understood the functioning of that industry or that you know core domain mm -hmm. and said ye to hum bhi bana sakte hain mm -hmm. and then started with books slowly added other categories and today we know flipkart happens to be one of the most valuable companies of india mm -hmm. indian indian startup ecosystem mm -hmm. and i can go on to give many many such examples of people we talk about paypal mafia mm -hmm. today we talk about paytm mafia we talk about flipkart mafia people who have worked with paytm have created other financial behemoths people who worked with flipkart have created other unicorn startups in india mm -hmm. so therefore unless and until through internships through projects through work experiences you build your skill set in certain domains you will not be able to get to the organizations of your choice so there is no substitute to that 
so that is number 3 mm-hmm. number 4 so number i will uh, recall the four things mm-hmm. number 1 so uh, reading the books mm-hmm. uh, internships and projects courses courses yes mm-hmm. number 3 was courses mm-hmm. number 4 which we already discussed case competitions and all sorts of paper presentations and all competitions mm-hmm. whether conducted by colleges whether conducted by corporates mm-hmm. so on and so forth mm-hmm. number 5 which is very very important is the ability to consume content online mm-hmm. and online when you consume content stop following influencers start following experts mm-hmm. i hope all of us understand the difference between an influencer mm-hmm. and an expert mm-hmm. we live in the world of paid posts correct mm-hmm. so an influencer usually mm-hmm. i don't want to give a number but mm-hmm. usually posts paid content Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and there's only so much value you can get from a paid content mm-hmm. rather identify the niche that you're focused on mm-hmm. and identify the experts in that niche mm-hmm. correct and start following those people on whichever platforms they are active so i gave the example of professor aswad damodaran mm-hmm. he has a website he runs a dedicated youtube channel so if you want to learn valuation you have to follow professor aswad damodaran mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if you want to learn something about marketing in india mm-hmm. you have gems like kartik shrinivas and nambi parmeshwar and vani dandia mm-hmm. and uh, people from ogilvy people from jwt who share real examples every day of the work that they create and they share their journeys and stories we see what zomato does every day we see what board does every day on the internet mm-hmm. so when i follow these people who are creating that work not content mm-hmm. for, for them that it is their work it is not their content mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so so for people who are creating that work and if i am able to absorb what they are doing and understand their point of view their psyche mm-hmm. of what they are thinking when they are doing something there is so much for me to absorb from that certainly correct so the fifth thing which is very relevant today mm-hmm. is to consume expert work not expert content mm-hmm. expert work from the internet across platforms whatever platform mm-hmm. that works for you mm-hmm. because right now is the age of maximum distraction you open the internet you open instagram youtube you know your feed will be filled with paid Absolutely. content with clickbaits but this is where your discipline your mindset has to come into picture no i'm not going to go for clip mm-hmm. clickbaits i am only going to go for the thing that i open youtube for or the information that i'm looking for and everything else is you might fool yourself saying that okay i'm following someone related to this so isse kuch milega but no we know that's not the case if when searching for information go to credible sources go, go to experts number 6 which is a bonus mm-hmm. which i have kept for the last okay. which no one else will tell you okay. and i'm going to tell you today uh-huh. is something that you have been doing mm-hmm. is no matter what professional you are mm-hmm. no matter what domain you come from no mm-hmm. matter what career aspirations you have no matter what your qualification is no matter how good or bad your communication is if you are a professional today mm-hmm. in 2024 mm-hmm. you have to start writing on the internet i did not, not use the word content uh-huh. because you could write on linkedin you could maybe create a video mm-hmm. that is your choice i am mm-hmm. using writing as a very lucid way of mm-hmm. conveying that mm-hmm. unless you start communi- okay i will change the word writing as communicating mm-hmm. so you have to start communicating on the internet mm-hmm. on social media mm-hmm. so how do i communicate there are two primary methods that i see mm-hmm. a by creating content for one of these platforms mm-hmm. whatever method suits you for example in your case video is your go to platform mm-hmm. yes i i am very bad at video mm-hmm. so i only write mm-hmm. correct mm-hmm. so you could write you could uh, you could be doing spotify mm-hmm. audio content mm-hmm. you could be doing doing video content mm-hmm. but every week you should be shelling out two pieces of content about your domain something that you have learned something that you are trying to learn something that you have picked up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that people around you start recognizing you from that lens if you want to be a product manager and if you are week by week week by week sharing content on product everyone in your network knows that hey this guy is a product person mm-hmm. if you are sharing uh, let's say finance content they mm-hmm. know if you are sharing sh- stock market tips they know that you are an investment advisor mm-hmm. so no matter what your field of choice is mm-hmm. start post communicating mm-hmm. content mm-hmm. about that field on your social media mm-hmm. so that you start building your personal brand and opportunities will start coming your way now i told you i'll give you two ways to do that so yes. the first one was to put content for people who find it difficult to put content to begin with mm-hmm. and my success on social media today whatever little success i have i am very a, a tiny uh, ant today on social media is because of my comments mm-hmm. so particularly on linkedin mm-hmm. because i follow experts 
mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and i follow some of the best people on linkedin mm-hmm. and i am like a devout reader of something that things that they say and there are pieces of content that i really learn from that i really you know uh, value so and wherever i believe i can add a point of view or i can add a question or i can add a relevant info mm-hmm. i make sure that i put that comment there are two benefits of doing this mm-hmm. a when an expert puts out a point and your comment is below that thread mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there are 10000 people 20000 people 1 lakh people reading that so oh. there is a fraction of that people that uh-huh. will also read your comment uh-huh. and they will know that okay yogesh also knows something about this mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. subconsciously they re- start recognizing your name mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and therefore it builds your personal brand they may, they may want to come to your page follow you connect with you engage mm-hmm, with you mm-hmm, collaborate mm-hmm. with you look about look if there is anything that you write about absolutely uh-huh. so that's one way to mm-hmm. build your entire stream the second reason why commenting is a very great strategy mm-hmm. is when you are commenting on an expert's post a lot of experts do read their comments very sincerely right mm-hmm. so now imagine you being in the eyes of an expert Mhm that Yogesh has put a comment on my post and his point was amazing what he said Mhm mhm a lot of experts have DM'd me as a result of my comment on their post saying wow they may mm-hmm. not say the same thing as a reply to that comment because mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. there are lots of comments and they don't want to sound biased or something like that so there are lot of experts CXOs mm-hmm. global CXOs mm-hmm. whose posts I have commented on and they have dm me saying yogesh point well made i fully agree with what you have said mm-hmm. this is the response now my dms have access to mm-hmm. their dms mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. otherwise i wouldn't have had because they chose to reach out to me mm-hmm. i can reach out to them now whenever i want Absolutely. a and they recognize me so if i am a career oriented guy mm-hmm. and in my stream the experts of my stream recognize me already tomorrow when i want to grow tomorrow when i want advice tomorrow when i want better opportunities tomorrow when i want better avenues mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they are just one ping away from me or they already recognize me and therefore they may be willing to support me guide me help me hand hold me mm-hmm, whatever mm-hmm, the case might be mm-hmm. and i have tons of stories like this where people really transformed their position from being at one place to another place just because someone who was an expert knew them that is such a great point and the great part is and it starts with something so small absolutely just a comment but make sure it's not a very so i have three words that are banned on linkedin uh uh-huh. and i'm going to write this to linkedin that please ban ban these three words <laughs> okay. and i say this to most of most of people after doing their linkedin review uh-huh. so i do a linkedin audit for a lot of people and i tell them three words you should never write on a linkedin comment uh-huh. on a linkedin comment uh-huh. a congratulations <laughs> you bloody well congratulate that person <laughs> in their dms uh-huh. and write a really well meaning line that i'm really proud of you uh-huh. i look up to you whatever uh-huh. v- because when you write a congratulation there that are 97 not, other that congratulations that does not mean anything there are 97 other congratulations <laughs> a month later you ask that person did ria congratulate you i don't remember <laughs> but if you have sent them a dm mm-hmm. that's a personalized note they will never forget mm-hmm. and if it is really well intended good message they will definitely you know be reply grateful back, reply yeah. and be With grateful with a heartfelt message heartfelt yes. message so congratulations cfbr <laughs> okay 9 out of 10 times uh-huh. uh, when you do a cfbr whatever you have you are cfbring or whosoever's content you are cfbring i am already following that person by the way <laughs> okay so what is your cfbr for okay i understand you are doing it with a good intent but instead of doing a writing a cfbr please add a sentence Mm-hmm. with some keywords either about the person who has mentioned it or about the idea that they have mentioned mm-hmm. or about the target audience whom you are trying to reach out to mm-hmm. so that when they read your comment they will come to that post through your comment mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so let that comment initiate a conversation or an engagement or a value add that this is why i have cfbr mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. if you want to cfbr genuinely use the repost function rather than the cfbr wow because cfbr and repost does the same thing it brings a valuable piece of content mm-hmm. from your feed to someone else's feed exactly i have always questioned myself when i am putting a cfbr but then i i want to help but i don't know an alternative you just gave me an alternative absolutely so you will you will look at my feed in my history of linkedin you will find a cfbr only 5 or 7 times mm-hmm. and that too in cases where i did not know the person you did not or i did not have anything but i just wanted to make sure that this is something that reaches out uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. Or I was in a hurry. I was lazy. Uh-huh. Basically, the ultimate reason in my case also would have been that I would have been lazy. Uh-huh. But ideally, either I would repost or I would add a beautiful sentence, uh-huh. and I will tell them that do this. Uh-huh. The third word that should be banned from LinkedIn is to share your email ID. Interested. <laughs> in other words, people write interested email ID. Comment. I understand, and I am I am myself a culprit. In here, I have shared posts where I have asked people to write a certain keyword. or i asked for the email id i have done that mm-hmm. i have done that last week also let mm-hmm. me be very very candid here mm-hmm. but if i were the consumer here doing it for someone else i will not put my email id mm-hmm. i will not put the word interested mm-hmm. you know what i will do mm-hmm. i will dm that person i will mm-hmm. connect with that person i will dm that person i will appreciate them for whatever resource or whatever idea that they are sharing and then i would look up their profile and i would see what i can appreciate them on or whatever else and then i would very politely humbly thank them and ask them for that resource mm-hmm. because when i do an interested i have seen so many linkedin profiles their profile is full of just interested cfbr and congratulations there is no fourth comment on their in the history <laughs> of their comments and that really pisses me off agreed correct so if you genuinely want to show someone gratitude for what they are sharing mm-hmm. okay share your email id write the word interested but again write a sentence so that when that post on your behalf reaches your feed uh, your followers feed right they know a little better about it rather than they just seeing your email okay. id or your interested word mm-hmm, mm-hmm. correct plus the author the po- original poster also believes that you are not here only to take the content from them mm-hmm. but genuinely appreciative of their efforts mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right i will never forget people who write a sentence after my post saying yogesh you are doing some great work or i am also looking forward to so and so thing from you or i also did download the previous thing that you sent me that's such a amazing gesture small thing yeah. but really makes your day as a content creator absolutely so Couldn't three words that should be banned from linkedin interested <laughs> cfbr and congratulations, congratulations. and the best part is you have given alternatives for all that you are not just saying ban this you are telling don't do this do this absolutely. instead because you want to stand out at the end of the day a cfbr will not help you stand out mm-hmm. a congratulations will not help you stand out an mm-hmm. interested will not help you stand out mm-hmm. if you want to stand out start personalizing your messages on comments on dms wherever it is mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the seventh point that i want to add is for you to be able to attend as many events as possible if possible physical events if not possible then at least online events events could be uh, some business conclaves seminars master classes anything that has to do with the domain of your choice and as long as you are able to be present as, at those events there are two things that you will benefit from a you would be able to learn what is the latest thing in that industry in that domain from the experts and b you would get an opportunity not just to meet and connect with the experts but also with other fellow professionals in that industry and therefore you build your network by being physically present at that particular event this podcast that is happening today with riya is happening because of an event that we were a part of yesterday and we got to talking about careers and you know all of that mentoring and all of that and in a jiffy we decided that let's record this and here i am so events could really be transformative to your journey for the career that you want to build wow so that that's been such a powerful message the entire conversation has been amazing i did not know we'll be covering topics of such relevance you know you've answered so many of my own questions and i couldn't imagine what you've done you've given to the students to professionals to anyone who's looking for guidance something that you did not have and you're trying to do i'm sure my audience will love to get to know about the resources that you share so i'll make sure that uh, i uh, put all of them in the caption whatever you're ready to share if you want to accept my audience as Absolutely. your Absolutely i'm happy any of you looking for a job you need to be a part of the opportunities group mm-hmm, please mm-hmm. you're most yeah, welcome we'll we'll put all of that uh, in the caption if you need any support from me on a cv review on mm-hmm. career guidance anything mm-hmm. uh, you could have my topmet mm-hmm. account you could have my linkedin you could reach out to me i'm very mm-hmm. approachable i'm i i generally respond to most of my dms or anything like that very fast right yeah. so the intent is always to make sure that someone who deserves the right support you will get the support and and when yogesh says it he means it i know that for a fact now because he said i'll be here and he was here before time so thank you so much for giving me your time today thank you so much for this amazing amazing conversation yogesh it was a pleasure meeting you and and for everyone who stuck till the end i hope you took something very valuable from this from this conversation so thank you so much thank you riya